Welcome back to Spartan Tackle Fishing. Today's video, we're gonna ask the question, is social media destroying land-based shark fishing? And then I'm gonna take you guys into the Florida laws and we're gonna talk about what the exact laws are when it comes to handling prohibited fish. So we're gonna cover all of that today, you guys. Now I had to ask myself this question. How do I best make our community aware of what's happening right now as far as with land-based shark fishing and conservationalists and researchers? I had to decide essentially, should I talk about the big hammer challenge? Should I talk about terraforma tackle and all of that destruction? And what I chose ultimately in this video is all I'm gonna do today is talk about the facts and talk about the data because right now the most important thing that I can do is make our community aware of what's going on right now. And the reality is researchers, conservationalists, scientists are studying us like a bunch of animals. I'm gonna take you guys into two research papers and I'm gonna quickly, briefly summarize those research papers. And I'm gonna show you guys what social media has already done to land-based shark fishing. The second report I'm gonna go into is now that the cat is out of the bag, what can we do as anglers to stop the bleeding or to improve our overall quality quality of community. Now I'm going to end this video by accessing Florida regulations so that we can go over in intimate detail what are the exact laws of handling prohibited species. Now real quick before I dig in, this is what I want to let you guys know. Over the past two to three weeks, I have dug up and reviewed probably a hundred pages on land-based shark fishing from conservationalists or research reports. And now that I know what I know now, I would have done so many things differently when I started doing YouTube videos. And the reality is, is right now, my biggest concern right now is on how people are handling sandbar sharks, but I'll get into that as we go into the video towards the end when we go over the exact laws for handling prohibited species. So where I'm gonna start the video is by accessing a report from David Schiffman. And essentially David Schiffman went undercover and researched internet forums. Now that report led essentially to the new regulations in Florida law, which essentially redefine how anglers deal with prohibited fish. So it's very intriguing that this report is what led to the rule and law changes. Let me show you now. So where I'm going to start this video is by accessing this report right here. Now this report is by David Schiffman titled Fishing Practices and Representations of Shark Conservation Issues Among Users of Land-Based Shark Angling Online Forum. So basically David Schiffman did this report on angling practices based on an online forum. And what's really intriguing, this came out in 2017, as you can see here. Now this is the report and research paper essentially that led to all of the law changes in Florida. Conservationalists and policymakers actually reviewed this report to decide what to do differently when it came to anglers handling prohibited species. And what I'm going to do is to bring up some snippets of this article just to give you an idea of what happened exactly. Here's the background of David Schiffman's report. Because of its status as a hotspot for recreational shark fishing, Florida is an ideal location to study land-based shark fishing. Accordingly, to provide an initial characterization of South Florida's land-based shark fishery, we conducted a content analysis of posts made by members of the South Florida Shark Club, the largest land-based shark fishing club in Florida on their online discussion board. The South Florida Shark Club is an organization whose stated goal is to promote and protect sport of land-based shark fishing. South Florida Shark Club discussion forums are an active place of discussions with almost 1,200 registered members in the South Florida Shark Club writing 48,000 posts on 7,000 topics as of January 31st, 2014. Some discussion board posts report the result of shark fishing trips while others focus on a variety of related topics, including proposed shark fishing regulations, perceptions of other stakeholder groups and other shark conservation issues. In other words, David Schiffman, a conservationist, a scientist, a researcher, went undercover and studied the South Florida Shark Club and thousands and thousands of comments, pictures, and posts. And when he did that, he went all the way back to 2014. So all of this report is essentially based on and concluded on a forum on social media. So again, the law changes happened because of the forum 
on social media. And after I'm done reviewing this report with you guys, I'll let you know what my conclusion is on whether or not social media actually destroyed shark fishing, but let's hop back in this report. So guys, pay attention to this because y'all need to understand when you post on social media, the implications of that. Take a listen to this. Online discussion forum posts are typically unsearchable, allowing researchers to analyze months or years of conversations without needing to observe them in real time. Discussion board analysis can be considered to be a, a virtual equivalent of reading diaries or autobiographies, already an established component of, of this type of research. So in other words, these researchers are saying whatever we were posting on social media is like a diary. They go back years to see what we're saying and what we're doing. Did y'all know that? That's happening right now. The report goes on. Content analysis was carried out on spots from the South Florida Shark Club online forum homepage. This method is a forum of unobserved research, which allows researchers to study stakeholder preferences without influencing the stakeholders, which stakeholders mean is the users and the anglers. This is useful for studying controversial topics that stakeholders may be uncomfortable discussing with researchers. When analyzed discussion board contents, passive observation in an established best practice because of when forum users are aware that they are being studied they may alter their behavior they may alter their behavior or even express hostility to researchers so in my opinion what he's saying is, is in order to justify going undercover he's saying that if he didn't go undercover that people would get aggressive towards him or even change their behavior so that is his justifiable reason for going undercover in our community let's continue this will go into how they actually analyze analyze the forum. And you guys, everything is going to be linked in my description if you want to access any of this information. In total, this study analyzed 1,256 posts from 91 topics from the South Florida Shark Club online discussion forum. These topics were selected based on the presence of keywords and subjects of interest. And there is no way to determine how many users posted because of the data. So this is saying they analyzed 1200 posts from 91 different topics to draw the conclusions that they are drawing in this report. Also, what I find extremely interesting about this report, and you guys can access it if you want to click the link in my description, is he pretty much took all of our arguments and used them against us. Like, oh, it's about commercial fishing. It's about this. It's about that. And used it against us because his argument is, is we're breaking the law, right? His argument is not about commercial fishing. Their argument is, is as anglers, we're breaking the law for prohibited fish. That's what his argument is. So they went in and reviewed a bunch of different comments. You guys can read this, but this one, this section right here goes into basically how, you know, the conservationists and researchers only care about the rich. They don't care about the poor, blah, 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 blah. When in my opinion, we should put effort on improving what we're doing wrong. Now I agree that greed is ruining us for sure. Greed is ruining us. I am not debating that. And I'm also not debating that commercial fishing is responsible for a lot more destruction. But what I am pointing out is the law breaking, right? We need to understand what they're telling us. They're telling us we're breaking the law and our excuses aren't working. Now listen to this. We found evidence of a perception that under the right circumstances, fishing regulations can be broken without punishment. Posts focused on how to continue fishing in locations where fishing was restricted or banned and how to continue fishing prohibited for prohibited species without being caught, fined, or prosecuted. So they're so they've uncovered essentially us, you know, explaining to other anglers how to break the law. I mean, this doesn't look good, right? This just this just does not look good, in my opinion, because you know, the people that are reading this, yeah, greedy politician, policymakers, or, you know, uh, people that are radically opposed to catching sharks. So this doesn't look good. Let me continue. The content on these posts included shared email replies from law enforcement from law enforcement officers and from defense attorneys. One forum topic, avoiding becoming an easy target, included suggestions such as not advertising in advance where you will be fishing, not allowing strangers to photograph with you, and fishing primarily in, in areas where law enforcement officers rarely patrol, managing social media privacy and security settings, and scripting what to say if a lifeguard or law enforcement officer asks you to stop fishing. And again, here's the issue, you guys, you know, looking back at all of the effort I put in, we should have been talking about what we can do better, right? Not on how to get away with what we're doing. We should talk about what we need to do 
to better ourselves, right? That's what I'm saying. Some users said that they would not follow any laws that restricted their ability to fish for whatever species they wanted whenever they wanted. In one case, an angler reported that he had successfully exploited loopholes in the regulations to avoid getting in trouble even after he was caught breaking them and suggested that other anglers emulate this strategy. All right, so that's that obviously uh, sounds really bad. Let's continue. Now this right here is essentially gonna go into some people in these forums are actually pro-conservation and some people actually hate uh, you know the scientific community's guts. So if you guys wanna read this, go ahead. But really interesting to quote, look at some of these quotes that this report is using. Biased self-serving interests like big lobby eco-terrorists. I mean, <sighs> This just doesn't sound good, right? These people don't represent me, but I'm lumped in with all of these anglers, right? Saying and doing these crazy things. Let's continue. So this section right here covers all kinds of rebuttals to conservation, to regulations. I mean, this is pretty... This is pretty cringy stuff here. If you guys want to come back and read this, or you can pause this video and read this, but I will tell you that essentially everything that we have said as a community is pretty much in this report. And they have already found rebuttals. So just understand that. What's really important to understand is they're not only using what we're saying against us, against us as a whole, as a community, they're also using our pictures. So the report also took these pictures from the South Florida Shark Club. And you guys can see here, and this is one of the primary reasons why there's law changes. They have concluded that each one of these pictures shows illegal behavior. And as such, they, you know, put this in the hands of policymakers, FWC and started sounding the alarm of what the problem was. And the problem here, guys, is these fish are prohibited, right? This is, the, well, obviously they're not uh, being handled correctly in my opinion, right? But that's a video for another time. I'm specifically talking about the law, right? What's legal, what's not illegal. And they've determined that every one of these is illegal, right? Now, my biggest concern for what's going on right now is sandbar sharks. Like I said, look at this. So look at number I and look at number J and look at K. How many times have we seen sandbar sharks drug up on the sand like this? And a sandbar shark is federally protected, meaning we have to handle them properly in Texas and in Florida. So every time I see that, you know, I, I feel like the researchers are going to keep using that against us. So be careful when you guys are posting your sandbar shark pictures because they're federally prohibited species. But again, you know, here's the proof right now. You guys be tasteful on your post. If you don't, you're just going to accelerate how bad things can get. So here's the conclusion of David Schiffman's report. I'm just going to summarize this for you guys. This study provided evidence that land-based shark anglers in Florida catch a minimum of hundreds of sharks each year, suggesting that additional research attention should be paid to this comparatively understudied fishery. We documented dozens of cases of illegal interaction with protected species, including, br including bringing protected species completely out of the water and delaying the release to measure the shark. Additionally, reported fishing practices did not change following the introduction of new law protections for hammerhead and tiger sharks. And this is what I think is going to happen in Texas. Obviously, Texas does not have hammerhead and tiger shark or lemon sharks on the prohibited species list. But if someone gets a hold of the pictures that are being taken of these fish drug up and bleeding and being measured, I think that, you know, the same thing's going to happen in Texas that happened in Florida. They're going to put the hammerhead and tiger on the... Uh, on the prohibited species list. And then if we mess that up, they're gonna re-regulate us just like they did to Florida. Let me continue. Discussions on how to avoid getting caught as well as how to avoid arrest or prosecution if caught suggest that anglers are aware that their practices are illegal. And again, this is the problem that I see in our community. We need to do a lot better job of what we should be doing, right? What is the law? What, what, what is right? What is wrong? What's clarity? Most people want to do the right thing. Most people don't want to break the law. But unfortunately, that's, that's one of the conclusions of this report. While this study provides evidence that some South Florida Shark Club forum users closely follow regulations governing their sport, it also, it also suggests that some users may be unwilling to follow those regulations because they believe that commercial fishing is the bigger problem. But the thing is, is we're not, they're not talking about commercial fishing. And that's what I'm really trying to express to people. It is a problem. I'm not saying it's not, but they're researching us for violating the law. That's something that we need to deal with right now. And then by all means, fight commercial fishing. But right now, 
we need to do something about this. So in conclusion, do I believe social media destroyed land-based shark fishing? And my conclusion is, is it certainly accelerated it. I believe that social media was essentially the catalyst exposing really bad handling behavior for sharks that are protected. I believe ultimately what is destroying land-based shark fishing are the anglers that just don't care about angling the correct way. If a law changes, explain that to the community, show them, you know, lead by example. But when we sit here and stay fighting about how commercial fishing is a bigger problem, meanwhile, we're violating the law, things are only going to get worse. So in other words, I believe social media exposed land-based shark fishing. I believe it's accelerating the destruction, but I definitely believe the true culprits are the individual anglers that continue to do very bad things. So now the question is, is now what do we do, right? The cat's out of the bag. Social media is everywhere. We got, you know, YouTube. We got people that are not even in our community on YouTube that are pushing land-based shark fishing. So it's out of our control. As anglers, what do we do? Do we just remove ourselves from social media or what? And the thing is, guys, here's the thing that really sucks for me. My conclusion is, is really the only thing that we can do is continue to try to provide better, cleaner education. Now, I'm basing that a lot off a report that was done from the survey that Florida anglers took. They basically interviewed about 9,000 land-based shark fishing anglers and really determine how do land-based shark fishing anglers learn right now. And again, you guys, I read five reports on land-based shark fishing. There's so much research being done in our community. It's insane. But take a look at this. This is from the survey done. This is an analysis on the answers that were selected from anglers. And essentially, almost every angler is getting almost all of their information from the internet or from YouTube. So in other words, the cat is out of the bag. There's nothing we can do as anglers except try to provide clean and effective education. That's my last conclusion, you guys. And I don't know what else to do. This is a mess. We can't control the internet. Look at all the trolls. Look at all the psychomaniacs on the internet. But unfortunately, that's where everyone goes to learn about land-based shark fishing. Look at this. Almost everyone is going to either YouTube or the internet to learn about land-based shark fishing. And again, these people are way smarter than I am. And here's what their conclusion was from that from the survey they did for Florida, because these people that are doing this report, I actually love these people. This is American Shark Conservancy. This is someone that as a business owner, Spartan Tackle, we actually donate 10% of the proceeds to this company because of how good they are. The good thing about American Shark Conservancy is, is they're field workers and they understand how much efficiency for their research plays a role in post-mortality research. In other, in other words, they're very effective at their research while other researchers that were a part of some tagging in Texas, in my opinion, actually killed the sharks because they took too long applying their sat tags. And that's why I'm so disgusted at that report. And that's why I'm so happy with this group of people. But here's their conclusion. I'm just gonna read the bottom paragraph. We also found that anglers who use the internet or a combination of channels or sites to learn more about fishing skills might be more supportive of fishery management initiatives and therefore more willing to modify their behavior to ensure shark survival post-release. Now, it's especially important to understand what they're saying. They're basically saying that there's not enough education out there. And the more education that anglers get from a variety of websites, internet, YouTube videos, the more likely it is for anglers to start demonstrating really good hand Handling practices for prohibited fish. So in other words, my conclusion is with all of these scientific research papers is as anglers, we need to be careful. We need to be very, very careful. And I'm going to pull up right now the Florida law and we're going to go over what is legal and what is not illegal. But here's why you got to be careful with researchers. Ultimately, you're putting yourself and you're putting the fish at more risk. If the researchers have to tag or satellite tag fish, it's going to delay the release, right? It's mostly always going to delay the release unless that research team really knows what they're doing, which generally they don't. But not only that, we also have to keep ourselves safe. Just because we call NOAA to get tags does not give us a right. This is important to understand. 
It does not give us a right to delay the release of a fish by tagging. What we do is, is we put ourself at risk of prosecution. It does not give us a, a, a tag free card or do whatever we want free pass. If we tag, understand that we expose ourselves to these regulations. So here's the frustrating thing. There's really no official educational site. So I'm hoping the conclusion of a lot of these scientific reports and research papers are gonna essentially tell the researchers, well, we need something official. We need to understand as anglers, you know, what is right and what is wrong. There's not enough clarity in my opinion, but I'm gonna have this linked in my description. Here is really the only official educational content. This is basically what you need to take in order to get your shark fishing permit in Florida. So this is a shark smart fishing education course. So I'm gonna go into module two so that we can really dig in. So I click the prohibited species tabs. Now this is really important because this is really what I want to like make you guys aware of. Now I understand as anglers, we usually know what is best and what's not best. But what I really want you guys to understand is the law, because when you're in front of a judge explaining things, it's a completely different world. Okay. And the first thing that I, again, you guys, <clears throat> I'm not trying to knock you. I have done so many mistakes myself. I really wish I would have dug into this before I even started YouTube videos. So that's my bad. I, I, sh I would have done a lot cleaner on my videos <clears throat> as far as how to deal with the prohibited species. But look at this. The first one is must keep the, the very number one thing. And this is what so many people get wrong is you must keep them in the water gills submerged understand that because I've seen all of this bickering back and forth. Oh, it's okay to measure as long as you're measuring when you're de-hooking. But the thing is, ain't no one doing this the right way. Every single picture or video that I have seen with measuring, their gills aren't completely submerged. You guys, they could mess with us if the gills aren't completely submerged and they decide to mess with us. They decide to go after us. They have, they have a cause to fine us and to penalize us because the gills aren't submerged. Remember that. And look at the second thing must be released immediately. So all of this bickering, I think what we're not, you know, getting clarity here is I'm going to show you what's the confusing part. But again, remember the first two things gills submerged and they must be released immediately. No delay immediately. Now the third bullet point, cut the hook or leader if the hook cannot be removed quickly. Here's the problem, okay? Here's the thing that we need clarity on. What does remove quickly mean? If we had like a time limit, like, hey, you guys are allowed to try to remove the hook for 10 seconds, all right, we can stay safe. But the problem is, is remove quickly is up to an opinion. Quickly and immediately are two different things. And here lies the problem. And this is what a good lawyer will fight at. Well, they were trying to remove it quickly and the anglers needed to keep themselves safe, right? So we can fight things like this, but in order to fight, y'all know how much attorneys cost? Thousands of dollars. Do y'all really want to go through that? My point is be safe. Do not. And look at the fourth bullet point. Do not delay release for photos. Look at the second one, you guys measuring, measuring, I have never seen a picture or a video where someone was measuring with that shark completely submerged in the water while they were removing the hook. Because the thing is, is we don't have a time on quickly. How far is quickly? Do y'all see my point here? Do not delay for release for photos, measuring, or tagging. Now remember y'all, I'll have all of this stuff linked in my description if you guys wanna learn more about land-based shark fishing or you wanna access some official educational content so that you better know on how to handle a shark and how not to handle a shark. Now in conclusion, I fear that as a community, if we don't provide better education, stronger, more clean education, I think that land-based shark fishing is just going to continue to unravel until it's finally banned completely. And Texas is not immune, you guys. I believe that Texas is essentially just going to follow Florida. So as a community, whether we're in Texas Florida, the Carolinas, wherever we're at, we need to do a much better job on the internet and social media as far as understanding what we're posting. Because remember, unfortunately, just one angler can ruin it from us all. But I also want to tell you this, just one angler can make things better for us all. And I'm really hoping, really hoping that I don't have to be the only one to provide factual awareness and solution on what we could do better. You guys, I have four kids. I have three jobs. I can't keep doing this, right? And look at how much I get roasted. This is the internet. Look at these maniacs on the internet. You guys, I just love shark fishing. 
I, I believe in fighting for what I love. I have a lot of good memories. I've met a lot of great people and that's what I'm holding on to on why I'm even putting the time in that I'm putting. Now, other than that, guys, I really hope this video and this breakdown gave you guys some additional insights, value, and perspective. Wish you luck out there, fish clean, and be careful.